I don't think many success stories come without heartache and um, struggle and loss. I think mean, it's very rare for someone to have immediate success without going through something. And I talk about it a lot about my journey and I don't seek sympathy. I never have. I don't expect anything from anyone. I don't actually ask anything of anyone either. What I like to do really is just share the, share my story, share my experiences to provide perspective of life and hopefully help people heal through pitfalls in ways where I didn't have that support. So by going through things, I'd rather help people so they don't struggle so much. That's really what it comes down to, which is the only reason I really talk about the real frustrations in my life. It doesn't come from an ego or anything or me just hoping that someone connects. It's, it's just bigger than that, you know? So, like, life is so hard for me and it's, it's, um, it's unbearable at times, you know? The one thing is I never take my eye off the prize. I never stop believing in myself, but that's just fundamental. I literally do not give up. And my mindset doesn't even allow me to consider anything else. I will be successful. I have zero doubt about it. It's just frustrating when every time you think it's coming, there's another, there's now another prolonged series of events rather than the success. So it's like, oh, so still got to wait longer and longer. And the more that happens, of course, you lose a little bit of the spark. You know, um, some things fade because it just seems like the dream continues to get pushed back and back and back. And effectively, by the time you get that, by the time it all comes together, you've sort of, to some degree, maybe lost interest slightly. Maybe not as exciting now. But I think it's at that, I personally think it's at that stage where maybe things do come together because now you won't lose yourself to it you're so much effectively i think the waiting period actually makes you more grounded and stable you wouldn't lose yourself in sort of like the headlights now you just know your worth and effectively you become great at what you do so you're actually ready to step into it you know, maybe a bit of more of a nonchalant attitude rather than all hyper and excited um of course you know i think when you get any breakthrough you'll still be really full of joy and final relief so I've been working a lot uh, doing my videos. So I don't really get anywhere. It's quite a frustration. I try, I try to balance my content. I don't like to push spirituality onto people. But I think I believe personally that there's a deeper reason as to why my content doesn't reach the, the audiences. And I don't think it's the quality of the content at all. I don't think it's that. I think there's a level of protection for me because maybe the world isn't quite ready. Um, I think there's also a case of, like, again, with people not being ready for it, it's it's not going to go mainstream. So there's a couple of nuances there. And like I say, there's a level of protection because the world, because the world isn't ready, you could be a target. I get a, a lot of science in my life about hidden, hidden in plain sight. It's so frustrating. So no matter what I do, no matter what I create, I can get no, I get no traction. I can create gaming videos, and I enjoy doing them. I can't get anywhere. I could create videos to uplift and inspire people. I can't get anywhere. I could sit, I could do, I can do videos on spirituality, really open people's eyes to it, share my experiences. Um, so it's not to coerce anyone. It's just to share my experiences and allow people to do as they will within their own lives. But it's really just expand your mind. I get nowhere. Um, I can, I can write book after book. I get nowhere. <laughs> it's just crazy, you know, but, I won't sell myself, and that's the one thing I've never done. I've never taken an easy way out of anything. I don't get sidetracked. Um, I don't, I'm not, I'm someone very high morals. To my own detriment sometimes. Financially, I'd say. But, you know, finances don't deter, dictate my life, so I just won't do it. So I get a lot of, even just on TikTok, for instance, I get a lot of, like, notifications about collaborations to promote a product. You got an invite for this, an invite for that, an invite for this. Um, even I've even had a, um, something from TikTok saying about selling my books and the TikTok shop. It's amazing how the algorithm works, you know. Um, I don't take them up on any of those offers, so I have no interest. You know what I won't do is 
promote products to put people out of pocket when I don't even endorse the products just because I want money. I, I, I refuse to make people suffer for me to have. That's what it comes down to. And that's how I see those 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 mod, uh, those models, really. And I think there's too many people that are prepared to leech and suck people dry for their own gains. So they have their nice house built on the funds of um, others suffering. That's effectively what it is, you know. Keep putting things in people's faces, saying, you need this, you need this, you need this. I'll get this before it goes. Before this, before... That's, how, that's how they sell. Everything's that fear of missing out. So you want to get it. Meanwhile, you... some people, the sad part is some of these people probably can't even afford it. And they put themselves uh, in, stru- in financial destitution just to support a creator. I think that's mad. So you don't see me asking for handouts. I don't ask for anyone of anything. Because uh, I actually don't want anything from anyone. I just want to be able to create, help, move on. Create, help, move on. I don't linger around. I just, I don't have the energy for that anymore, you know. It's just that I don't interact so much. Because like I say, I'm just more interested in sharing my advice and then just move on. I don't want to overwhelm myself um, with continuous engagements anymore. So I just, I'm just here to help people and then I want my space and freedom because the more you give that up, the less you have of yourself. And I don't want to lose myself entirely to a cause, if you like. I want to give as much as I can but keep myself healthy um, of sane mind and not overly exhausted because I push myself to the brink on a regular basis I'm always tired I'm always putting pressure on myself there's always this burning desire to do more even when in reality I think I've done enough um, as you can see there with the books I can lose count it's like six books there's four more in development any of them could release in the spring because that literally the manuscripts are that far in advance I've just got to do heavy edits on all of them and um, the work's there and that's a great place to be. Like I said, I'm always working. I'm always working on the projects. There's always something coming. I always wanted to help people. So I don't really, when it comes to the books, I don't linger around. I forget, how, in all honesty, I forget how good they are. And I think they're great. So I could pick one up and I'll be, I'll be, it'll, I'll, and that's not, not inflating myself or ego or status or anything like that. It's not me posturing at all. It's just that when I pick any of them up and I start reading them, I'm like, oh, that was a great chapter. Oh, that one was powerful. That'll help so many people. And that's what it comes down to. I just I see people struggling in life. And they've got no direction. They've got no support. And I'm like, oh, these books will help everybody. Like so many people of different walks of life. And they're separated, you know. If you're not on a spiritual journey, just forgo the spiritual books. So lose your mind to find your soul is my spiritual book. Then just don't go near it. You don't need to. And then you can just read the other books. Father's daughter, heartbroken daughter. They're my trauma, my struggles, going through family court, separation from my daughter, parental alienation, false accusations of emotional abuse, all sorts of things, you know. That's my trauma. And I shared it. I've documented it. Faithfully. It's all on. It's all, it's all transparent. It's exactly how it unfolded. So people get a window into my history. But then you also you get the other three books. Heal your mind to free your soul, find your peace to save your soul, and inspire your mind to enlighten your soul. And that's me having processed everything in my life and seeing things from various perspectives and really just opening people's eyes to creating a fundamental change for their life, to start living in alignment, follow your dreams. And that's where I want to come around to saying that, like, the healing journey is a process. Nothing can be expected overnight. And the success story, it takes time to create a success story. So how much of your time will you, are you prepared to dedicate to healing, growing, and then becoming a success? Um, my, process, my, my journey has been continuous. It's been a very exhausting five years. My whole life has been exhausting in all honesty and I think that's where you start to unravel you know when you think about your life you think about all the the highs the lows in reality there's few highs that just makes it even more demoralizing doesn't it I think you know um of course there's been great moments to like the birth of my daughter and things like that but they're just they're, they're like pivotal moments but if you go I don't want to go too deep into it all really at the moment, but, you know, if you go into the past, it's not full of very fond memories. Um, not to say it was all traumatic, it just wasn't really fond. Fond, it wasn't 
truly happy. Uh, I don't know where you, you start going through that. When, when are you truly happy? It's a crazy place to be, isn't it? When you start to process your life that way. Um, I'm truly happy when I'm in the presence of my daughter. When we're spending time together, we're just we're two peas in a pod. It's just so natural, effortless. It's a beautiful state of being. It's peace. Uh, it's true. I'm bridled happiness. It's great. You know, that's just where life just trans um, transcends the norm, really. Um, I'm happy when I'm creating. I'm happy when I'm sharing. When I'm healing, but when I see other people healing, that makes me happy too. So there's a process in it, and I have no doubt that I'm building towards a wonderful fulfillment that's been years in the making. It's been an extremely exhausting years in the making. Because the following your dreams comes at an immense sacrifice. Healing journey takes sacrifice. Effectively, you have to live a life that's maybe altered, completely altered from what you've done in the past because everything you did in the past created the version of you that now needs healing. So it makes sense that now we need to do some fundamental shifts in our life. So, for instance, I, I haven't jumped... I'm, I don't... I, I wasn't in many relationships in the past, but of course we all have um, attractions and you've, you've, you like people. You know, I'm not like that so much now. It's like, really, I'm so sort of picky because I'm aware of the chaos that can ensue from being in the wrong one. So now I don't really get enamored too much by people in general because it's just I can't help but think the connection could end in chaos. What's the person's angle? All these things. So it takes someone truly special now to even um, pierce my heart, if you like. So that side of life is um, still pending. Um, I think career for me is the one thing that I want to see progress. I want to do what I love and I want to be able to be financially successful from that. At the very least, financially stable. I want to thrive doing what I love. And I think obviously we all want that. And I've been building towards it and it's just frustration, frustrating that the doors haven't opened yet. But more than that, more than the money, because obviously money, money is money. It's, I can cope with very little. It's not fun, but I can do it. It's just, I think I can cope very little if I'm happy doing what I do, you know. But when you're bashing your head against a wall, effectively, what is it I want to do? And it's help people heal. And I think that's where the frustration is like, my, it feels like my life is just pending. Everything's just waiting. And, that, and that's, that's really where I get frustrated. That's where I'm truly frustrated. It's not the money. The money, yeah, it's annoying. Not having. But it's the fact that everything I create, it just doesn't get anywhere. So I'm not actually helping people. I have the capacity to help many. A vast amount of people. And I feel the work I do can heal people. But like I said, the videos don't get recognition. There's no notice. The audio books, the podcasts. My books in general, you know, everything I create, it just gets me nowhere. And it's like, I, I can't help people because it, I can't reach people. It's absolutely unreal. Um, and that's where the frustration lingers in my life is that I'm doing what I feel called to do. And I think I'm pretty great at what I do. I'm articulate. I can deliver a message in whatever form it is, whether it's video, audio, or the written word. I can do it all. But the message just seems to get lost before it get, before there's any chance of receiving it. And it's like, I don't know what's going on. It's just crazy to me. So if I knew people were healing from what I do, it'd make me happy, you know. But like I've done something special. Because you can't take money with you when you're gone. So what's the legacy you want to leave behind? What's the purpose? What's the impact you wanted to have? What was the life you wanted to live? Now, to each their own, if some people want to just live a life laying on a yacht and they think oh this is the life i wanted all my life it's like it's great um my life is more of service it's just more help people and um, heal the world very naive attitude at the moment i guess because the world is incredibly toxic and i talk about it a lot i don't say it's toxic for the sake of saying it's toxic and i wish it wasn't but there's just so much manipulation greed envy um hate there's just so much out there, really, that just makes this play, the, the world are quite a toxic, spiteful existence, and it's sad. But if people just started healing and loving themselves, they'd start exuding that, and it would end up um, 
have a knock-on effect influencing others and having a, a positive impact on society as a whole. And then we switch from toxicity to unconditional love. And when you truly love yourself, you don't wish bad on other people, you know. Um, so someone, yeah, so that's how that's often how you can tell someone's uh, healing journey. Really, people that are spiteful or they're lorded over people, they have no no respect for for the others. That it just shows they have no respect of themselves. And unfortunately, until they can truly respect themselves, they won't be able to uh, project that towards others. So the world becomes a nasty place. Um, but yeah. No, I say I create what I create because I want to heal people. And in the process, I'm always healing myself. But what I want people to really understand is that when you pursue your dreams, you are going to get challenged like crazy because everything is going to tell you to take the easy way out. There's going to be times where it's tempting. I could deviate from my path. I could turn around and say, this is just, this is just too painful. It's just, um, it's impossible even. To create, create, create and get nowhere. It's like digging in digging in the mud, you know, it's just it's just getting me nowhere. This is ridiculous. Um If you want something enough, I don't think you should you don't give up, do you? Because the reality is there's no alternative. Every path away from what I'm doing doesn't lead me to my happiness and fulfillment. The only potential for me to reach my happiness and fulfillment is to continue doing what I do. Because the other roads are just superficial, and I don't want superficial. I don't need a vast amount of money for nothing. I don't need a fancy lifestyle with no substance. It's just irrelevant. That's why you see people lose their minds when they become wealthy and successful. Like if it's from something that doesn't really pull at their heart, if it's not really personal, if it's not something that truly inspires them, they get bored. So they have to keep spending money to fill something. And it's like, it's so pathetic. Like, it's just pointless. It's a pointless existence, you know? You might think they're living their dreams. They're so miserable. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah, the money, the, the money isn't happiness. It's really who you are and what you're doing with your time and energy, you know? And I prefer to put mine towards good use. Um, sometimes that's going to put the spotlight on negative. So it might seem the, ne the content's negative. But unfortunately, at the moment, society as a whole is negative so we have to shine a spotlight on the healing required and how the different mindset and that's the way to to alter it so it's not like my mindset is entirely negative it's just that that's where we're having to head towards to heal it and, and that's just sadly how it is um but yeah like i said i don't want to put a spiritual connotation to it even though i'm aware of it it's just um the breakthrough will come and I want people to maybe see part of the journey to understand that when you get there, it's not me lording over people. It's the culmination of a lot of work, um, a lot of perseverance, and a healing of immense trauma. And rather than gatekeep, I shared it with the world in the hope that not only does it heal people, it stops events from repeating. The cycles need to end. I'm sick and tired of watching people repeat patterns of the past, their own patterns, but also those indoctrined and inherited from ancestors and those around them. You know, people are abusive, so they teach, so then they pass that abuse down to generations, and then they, then they, then they feel that, and then they continue to abuse. Whereas you've got to be a chain breaker, you've got to be brave enough to say, this isn't good, I want a better life for me and those around me, and then we start to create a better planet. But if we continue to repeat the patterns of the past, all we're going to end up is with this world annihilating itself, sadly. It's not a great place to live now. And I think if you go back through history, it doesn't, I don't think there was ever a period from my understanding when it was truly beautiful, um, at least the history we've been told, none of it seems great. It seems quite barbaric. You know, we've had, we've had plagues, we've had famine, so we've had poverty. Um, You've had absolute chaos, barbarianism, you know, medieval age. You know, I don't suppose many people got to, to any sort of significant age considering how uh, destructive it was and violent. And you go back through all those generations, you know. Um, I think we're at a time now where we have an ability to connect profoundly. I think we have an ability to share our stories, to create some immense impact on the world. 
then I think we should use our voice for good and healing. And like I say, the process isn't easy. And if you ever get demoralized, just know if you give up, you'll never be successful. So there's no give up, is there? The mindset is we will be we will be successful. And it doesn't matter how long it takes, we will get there. Uh, so just continue pushing forward and hope that you reach that one person that needs to hear something you say. And that's why I do what I do. Um, anyway, I thought I'd show up some of my books. I don't really talk about my books a lot. I just leave the um, the, the icons in the corner, really, just so people can see the pictures. Um, but yeah, I've got two different versions. I've got obviously audio books as well. So we've got paperback. Obviously, I've got this. Um, oh, that's helpful. <laughs> I always put like a screen screen thing on to try and fade the background out a little bit. So what's that's doing? It's messing up the video. Now this book isn't going to show up, I'm pretty sure, because I'm using like a blue filter because it's more of a grey in the room. And this book is very blue. <laughs> and I'm noticing it. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> that's actually hilarious. All right, so that's um, the hardback. <laughs> you can't even see it. Um, so effectively, it's the blue one in the middle there. Find your piece to save your soul, unfortunately, because of the... Um, filter that's fading out the background which is why if i go certain bits here look you fade it's just a good little filter really it just blocks off the background i didn't want to artificially place something in the back because you can do that you know a lot of people do that you put a green screen up and then you can place like an image in the background i mean i could play with it later but i'm quite happy with how i do my content now of course i'm speaking as always i speak off the cast i speak from the heart I can't be sure whether this has been a great video or not because sometimes I'm like that. I do a video and I just think, did I ramble? Like, was that a good video or was it a pointless one? Um, in all honesty, I don't think I've come across a video I didn't like. And I think that's a great place to be. Now, of course, I'm going to look at my content through maybe a different lens, different perspective than other people because I know why I create it. I know the message I wanted to deliver. And I recognize people are critical anyway. Um, and, and it's for people to do anyway. They have to use their discernment. I know why I do something. I know the authenticity f surrounding it. Other people, maybe they think there's an agenda, there's an angle. Um, maybe judge, uh, well, I, I would consider it unfairly, but at the same time, everybody has the right to judge, don't they? They have the right to make assumptions in their life, whether something's benefiting them, whether something's maybe to gain something for someone else. I get it. Um, uh, so I do what I do to try and help and inspire people. The reality is what I don't want to do is ever glamorize something. I don't want to put glamour over anything, you know. It's a case of I'm going to show the entire journey of my life from the from the struggle to the success. And people will see the process, the journey for me to get there. And I think it's really important. I've always felt that, that it's really important because you could talk about something after the fact. You can gatekeep all of that and then you can be successful and then you can talk about how hard your life was, but yet you never explained that while you was going through it. Why didn't you just explain it? And then people will see the journey. And I think that's far more authentic then maybe because you see all the time when people make up stories and then someone else turns around and says that, that that's not true that's not how that happened that's a load of nonsense and i find that quite frightening really that people come up with weird narratives just to um make their life seem more significant it's crazy i think everybody goes through things in their life and i think being transparent and open about it i mean it's a good thing because people can genuinely relate to it and that's the thing it's like from your point of view it might seem like it's a weakness or something that should be forgotten or it's not really worth talking about but actually it's those relatable moments that are worth talking about because that's really where people can connect you know I, I could say I'm going through I'm going through a financial <laughs> struggles while I pursue my goals which pushes me away from traditional employment and the way society expects us to behave especially our family you know there's always going to be some of an opinion now I could leave all that out and I could wait till I'm successful and just talk about how successful I am. And that's how a lot of these influencers are. They're like, they'll glamorize everything. They make it look like their life's perfect because they want to have that status before they're successful because it creates the image of success. And then people always just think they're always successful and they have this celebrity energy where they're always destined for this because I'm better than you. That's what they present as. Is that relatable? It's not relatable at all, but that's just the way people perceive success. So they think you have to behave a certain way to be successful. Reality is most people, most people, when you start to pursue your dreams, goals, and you start stepping outside your comfort zone, it's going to get hard before it gets better. It just is. 
and you're going to have to overcome some struggles. You're going to have to come overcome an awful lot of other people's judgment and um, projections. In the end, like, like I see smiling there, you can see I just don't give a shit. It's like eventually it just it fades. It, the noise fades. It doesn't matter. I'm not looking to mirror someone. I'm not look. I'm not looking to live their life. Their life is not my dream. So why would I mirror it? And that's the thing, isn't it? Like I said, a lot of people glamorize their life. And it's those that want you to follow their path for the most part. They try and they validate their life to you. Now, I'm not doing that here. Well, maybe in some ways I am. I don't know. Um, that's for people to discern all that. You know, that's, that's for people to live their life. Because it's, it's a case of you living your life on your terms. Okay? In the same way I live my life on my terms. But those in my life who have tried to perceive their life as great, I see the flaws in all of it. There's a level of laziness, a level of settling. Um, expecting everybody to do everything for them, um, but acting like they that, that they deserve everything, and yet they're not even they don't even put the work in. You know, they'll take willingly, willingly, like they deserve everything. So they have people have some people have uh, this this image of grandeur. They think they're better than other people all the time. You know, so they think they have that um, that moral sort of righteousness to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. I say I only talk from experience and the pitfalls and the hardships I've been through. Up to people what they do with it, you know, makes no bearing to me. It's just uh, I'd at least like to give people the opportunity to hear from maybe a different perspective of life rather than those negatively ingrained within. Because you just got to look at society as a whole. And like I said, you just look through the past. I think that's the best thing anyone can do is always look to the past, a series of events, and then ask yourself, how is your life going to end continuing this path? If more people actually pursued their dreams, their happiness, they'll find their fulfillment and there'll be immense success stories. It's not about wealth. Talk about that as well. Like, it's not like everybody's destined to be famous and wealthy. In fact, fame is actually um, more, of a, more of a curse than a blessing because you don't get your privacy. It's rare to get um, time to yourself. You, know? you have to be able to take an awful lot of weight on your shoulders because there's, there's, ju- there's always judgment. But unfortunately, it's part of, that's part of the journey sometimes, you know. Um, and wealth in the wrong hands can destroy a person. As we see with people when they do drugs, they lose their life early. They get themselves in situations they shouldn't because the money controlled them. So I think looking up at fame and fortune as the barometer of success is a very dangerous place to get to. Effectively, success is love. Unconditional love. Love of self. but how, And also having that that absolute love around you, um, unconditional, where you trust someone and they trust you wholeheartedly and you live your life in alignment. I think that is a success story. And if you can get to that point where you truly align with someone on such a level, it doesn't matter what anyone else says and does. It just, it's irrelevant. You live your life on your bubble and your terms. Um, and you're not affected by other people's expectations and, um, demands I think that's really when you're pursuing your real real happiness and then you just start to enjoy life doing whatever it is you really feel called to do and you enjoy you know and I think if you can get there you, you're winning and I don't think any amount of money could replace that so you can see some money and very lonely and I'm not saying loneliness is a bad thing though either like, for instance, I have, I have two sides of my personality. I'm very independent, and I can isolate. I have the ability to be a hermit, for instance, and I could literally isolate for the rest of my life, and I'll just create, like, a... Um, like, a work... Like, I, I could just do it like crazy. I could just be a workaholic. I could just, like, literally create, 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 create. Keep myself hunkered down, write books, do videos, constantly do that, and I could just keep sharing everything I know, everything I learn, everything I experience. Uh, turn it into wisdom and just heal people and I could just do that um, and I wouldn't say that's an un- unfulfilled life I'd say that was a life of service you know and I think in some way for some of us that's what our literal purpose is now the love of relationships and the experiences around that and you know the ability to buy things and treat ourselves and have all these other indulgences they're all they're all like a bonus that's how I see it I see it as my life is of service but the rest of it is bonus now if I can have both that would be a beautiful life wouldn't it but it can't, those other sides can't deviate me from the life, the purpose I have, you know. And that's what I've learned about myself. 
And I think that's the thing. It's not always about what we what we um sort of are ingrained to believe is success because it's like the money is glamour. It's nice to have, but don't let it consume you and don't let it like deviate you really from what you want to achieve. I talk about this a lot where we have different pockets of um our personality that need to be fulfilled. We want love, we want money, so we want I think there's also an ability to to travel and experience. But there's also the like work and things. Uh, do things you love and i think when something's missing you feel it so if you are pursuing your dreams like i do with my books and things there's things missing of course the uh, the ability to like the finances are not there and that affects my ability to travel to experience different things that i would love to experience so there's a there's a frustration that lingers around that i also don't have the love the romance as either so there's a lot of loneliness and suffering that comes from it but I do have me, and I'm very blessed to have me, especially the, the, the mindset I have and how strong and confident I am and how focused I am. So even with all that missing, I can still create my biggest successes. I feel incredibly fulfilled in that sense. There's just the other things. But I think the other things I'm missing are far easier to accomplish than uh, what I'm already achieving. So I think I'm already doing the hardest part, and I think that's a great place to be. Whereas other people, maybe maybe someone has the money, but they're completely lost with their life. They don't even know what they would what would make them happy. I think that's a that's a harder place to get out of if you don't know what you're doing. Um, and again, people can end up losing their minds in life early because it just gets too much for them. So how's the money better? It's not, but in unison, it can be a beautiful experience. Same way, love. Some people get caught up in lust, and um, they get they struggle to be alone. So they get themselves in relationships where it's just incredibly toxic. They lose their identity. So they wrap themselves in the idea of love. It wasn't reciprocated. Um, and they can also be just as toxic as the partner. So there's a lot of experiences to be had in that. It's not always great and beautiful, is it? But again, when you're grounded and self-assured, level-headed, you, you emerge it all, you can have a beautiful life. But when something's missing, you do fail it, of course. And it weighs on your heart, you know, because we all want love. We want to share love. We want to uh, receive love. So I share really where I'm at. I share my experiences. I share my lows. I share my highs. I share what I'm missing, what, I, what I'm doing great at. And it just always shows there's room for growth. There's always room for more. I think the biggest point really is to just find ourselves and or never make excuses as to why you can't do something. Because we can always do something. We can always do more. I can always do more. I could push myself far more out of my comfort zone to promote more on social media. It's just my integrity gets in the way i refuse to sell myself um and i don't want to do something i don't want to do like if i don't, don't want to do something i refuse to do it because i'm ref i just refuse to be someone i'm not so i'll promote where i can or where i feel the energy allows but i can't lose myself to it i don't want to um so i could engage more on social media for instance i could do an awful lot of content in that sense comment and um, create more posts on other platforms but it drains me it's not where I'm happy. It's not where I want to be. And I know it's a means to an end, but I just point blank refuse, which makes my journey harder and longer, I guess, in some aspects. But yeah, I just don't do it because it's like, if I, if I go there, I'm not going to be happy. I'm going to be frustrated and exhausted. And then it's a version of me that is having to exist, um, I think, to appease societal norms that I'm not here to do. So I refuse. I do it the harder way. Uh, but I don't want to ramble on. I just want people to understand that the um, the journey to success is certainly not a, a straightforward and easy journey. It takes a lot of hard work to attain success in our life in whatever avenue that is because there's so many, like I said, there's so many nuances to what success would mean to any of us. But it's for us to figure that out. Like what would success mean to you? What is your happiness? And literally takes forward steps to achieve it.